Welcome back, YouTubers and Mad fans. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff out the man, she's always got another Mad 22 preview video today. Today, I'm be going over what I think are going to be the best offensive teams in Madden 22. Whether you like to play CFM or Regs, these are going to be the teams. If you really want to have one of the best offensive teams in the game, these are going to be the teams to choose. Now, I typically like to do a series of videos like this every year before Madden 22 comes out. So, if you want to see more videos like this, hit the like button. And let me know in the comment section. I also want to do top 10 defensive teams uh top 10 overall teams just the best teams overall and i also like to do top 10 sleepers for my cfm players that really like to pick teams that are you know good but not overpowered uh they want a little bit of a challenge so if you want to see those videos those are the next four videos i have planned like i said hit the like button if you want to see that starting off with the rams this team here made a huge leap when they went out and traded for matthew stafford now matthew stafford isn't a ton better than jared goff in this game but he has one of the highest throw powers in the game at 94 which is going to really pay dividends in this offense, which I think is going to be a high-powered passing offense. If you go to the running backs, they have two really good young running backs in Cam Akers and Daryl Henderson. If you're playing CFM, you'll probably get more out of them over time. But they're definitely a really good one-two punch, uh, even in regs. Then you go to the receiving core, one of the best three wide receiver sets in the league. Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, and then they went and added Deshaun Jackson. I don't know what his speed's going to be. I would hope it stays around a 95. It might go down a little bit because he's coming off of major injuries. Uh, they also drafted two, a guy named Tutu Atwell. I don't think he's going to be that fast necessarily. But you can see the speed that these guys will add to an already strong receiving core. Then you go to tight end. They got Tyler Higby, who's solid. He's not spectacular, but he's definitely a, a good tight end end in this game and then they have a really decent offensive line with good bookends that should be able to hold you down so you can create a high power passing offense guys like Andre Whitworth I'm sorry Andrew Whitworth and Rob uh, Haverstein give you two guys on the edge that are at least going to be above 80 and should be able to hold you down to create a very high powered and consistent passing offense next up we got the Cowboys now this is kind of a, a theme when it comes to this list to make this list you got to have a lot of weapons that's really the most important thing I mean offensive line is important too but ultimately to get on this list you got to have weapons and Dak Prescott has a ton of weapons I'm not a huge fan of Dak Prescott specifically but he's a good enough quarterback to get it done you go to the running back position they're kind of you know going down a little bit there was a time where Ezekiel Elliott was one of the best running backs in the game he's not going to be that anymore he's a lot slower I almost feel like Tony Pollard would be a better option at this point especially if you're playing uh, Madden uh, then you go to the receiving core once again great three wide receiver set Mari Cooper's one of the best receivers in the game. Michael Gallup and CeeDee Lamb give you one of the best re receiving trios in the game. Then you get to the offensive line. Once again, they're kind of coming down to earth when it comes to the offensive line, but they still have a lot of talent with Tyron Smith and Zach Martin being two of the better players at their position in the league. You should be able to create enough of an offensive line so that you can really exploit these weapons and really create a high-powered offense. Next up, we got the Bills. Josh Allen's one of the best quarterbacks in the game. He's an 88 right now, but I'm sure Madden 22 will be even higher. Um, the guy's fast. He's got the, the best arm in the game. He's got a 99 throw power. And he's coming off of an MVP caliber season. So expect that guy to be like a 95 or something in that range. Something ridiculous. Uh, as far as running backs go, they have a couple of decent running backs in Devin Singletary and Zach Moss. Uh, but the best one is probably Matt Breda, who's buried on the depth chart here. If he makes the roster, the dude's a 97 speed. I mean, he fumbles a lot and he gets hurt a lot. But ultimately, uh, he's still going to be one of the best uh, running backs on this team because of that speed. You don't find speed like that in this game. So he would be the guy that I would start. Moving on to the receivers, they got some decent receivers here as well. Some real speed guys. Uh, Stefan Diggs is easily one of the best receivers in the game. He's a 92 speed. I mean, you know, faster. The faster the better, but that's still really good. Colt Beasley in the slot. They brought in Emmanuel Sanders. Gives him a really good three receiver trio and then they also have Isaiah McKenzie and, and Gabriel Davis some young guys um, that have a lot of potential next up we got the Cardinals so this is one of my favorite teams I love mobile quarterbacks and Kyler Murray is an absolute beast he's coming off of a really strong year so I expect him to go up as well 91 speed he's got the throw power he's got everything he needs you go to running back they don't really have a great running back they did bring in James Conner he's a good power guy they don't really have a speed guy that I like uh, but Chase Edmonds is probably gonna have to be that guy then you go to the receiving core they have DeAndre Hopkins who's an absolute monster 99 overall player probably will be again this year they brought in uh, aj green a six foot four guy definitely lost a lot of speed over the years but they have a ton of speed on the roster with christian kirk who is probably a more well-rounded receiver than some of the younger guys like rondo moore who they just drafted i don't know if he's really going to be a 97 speed guy but he's going to be fast i mean that's that's definitely an indicator of how fast he's going to be then andy isabella from a couple years ago that they drafted is also really fast uh the offensive line is 
is uh, pretty average, but they did bring in one of the best centers in the league in Rodney Hudson. So overall, this team, once again, it's all about weaponry, and they just have a ton of it at the receiving court. Next up, we got the Packers. Any team that has Aaron Rodgers has to make the list. I mean, the guy's coming off an MVP year. Hopefully, he'll be a 99. I can't imagine him being anything less, uh, but he's an amazing player. We all know that. I mean, he has the, the, the accuracy ratings that Aaron Rodgers has. is probably as good as it gets. Tons of throw power, really good speed, really great player. They also have a ton of running backs. They lost one of their better running backs, but they still have Aaron Jones, who's one of the best in the league when it comes to catching balls and running. Uh, they also have a young, uh, you know, pretty good looking young player in AJ Dillon to work up as well, who could be your future. Then you go to the receiving core. They only really have one receiver. They'd be much higher if they had a better receiving core. I mean, pretty much it's just Devontae Adams or Bust. Uh, they do have a little bit of speed in uh, Valdez Scantling, but overall, that's something that I think you need to improve. You need to get a second receiver that's worth something they definitely picked up a tight end last year or at least you know a tight end came out for them in Robert Tanya and had a really strong year so they definitely improved there and then the offensive line is really strong with David Bakhtiari one of the best tackles in the game next up we got the Titans now the Titans made this list the second they traded for Julio Jones but let's go over the rest of these players Ryan Tannehill it's become one of the most consistent quarterbacks in the league since joining the, the Titans. I mean, he has a pretty easy job. You hand the ball off to, uh, to Derrick Henry, uh, and he pretty much does all the work. And then, you know, you're basically playing one-on-one -on -one the entire game. But in Madden, he's got speed. He's got throw power. He's got accuracies. Those are the only things you need. So he's a really solid quarterback. But it's all about Derrick Henry and Julio Jones. I mean, how are you going to stop this team when I think Derrick Henry coming off a 2,000-yard year is probably going to be in the 99 club? And I would imagine, I mean, his speed might go up. Everything might go up on this guy. So he's the MVP. Then you go to the receiving core, and you're going to have Julio Jones getting one-on-one -on -one coverages most of the game because people will be stacking the box. A.J. Brown's a really good receiver. They don't really have a third receiver right now, but that's not too hard to find. I mean, they did bring in Josh Reynolds. Next up, we got the Seahawks. Russell Wilson is one of the best quarterbacks in the game year in and year out. He didn't hold that the entire year. He kind of petered off towards the end, but he'll still be like a top three rated quarterback probably in this game. Uh, running back-wise, I like a little bit more speed than what they have, but they have a great power back in Chris Carson. And this is really all about the receivers once again. DK Metcalf is an absolute star. Six foot three, 97 speed, just an absolute monster. Then you got guys like Tyler Lockett, who's really fast. And they drafted Dwayne Eskridge, who should easily be one of the faster rookies in the game. Here they have him as a 95 speed. Um, you know, that's the three wide receivers that you need. That's really all you need in this game. You don't really have a ton of four wide receiver sets or more. But that's going to be enough speed and that's enough talent to make this one of the most dangerous offenses in the league. Next up, we got the Browns. Now, this is pretty probably more of a run heavy offensive team it's really a philosophy based off of you know most of the teams i picked are pass heavy teams and they have receivers baker mayfield had a great year last year so he probably will go up a little bit in ratings but it's really about these running backs nick chubb is one of the best backs in the league he's an amazing football player he's hard to tackle a uh, pounding back with speed kareem hunt is an excellent compliment you can run this the run the ball all game because you have two great running backs it doesn't matter if they get tired you just got another one coming off the bench uh, which is amazing then then you get to the receiving core and they still have Odo Beckham Jr. People forget, you know, because he was hurt last year, but they still have one of the better receivers in the game. Jarvis Landry, definitely one of the best uh, slot receivers in the game. And then they also drafted a guy not a lot of people know about in Anthony Schwartz, who you can see here, they have him listed as a 99 speed. I don't know if he's really going to be that, but this guy's like an Olympic champion or something like that. He's a track and field guy. So it doesn't surprise me that they, they give him that speed, but he will be one of the fastest guys in the game. So you can definitely make him your third receiver, especially in the CFM, try to work him up or at the very least just send him deep a lot and see if you can get past coverages then you go to the tight ends they got two tight ends that are pretty good i mean uh and Juk and joku was a first round pick austin hooper's obviously the better of the two uh but where they really make hay too is at the offensive line they have a really strong offensive line uh joel petonio is probably one of their best uh wyatt teller jack conklin i mean you see they're they're, they're one of the most consistent offensive lines across the board now the top two teams really shouldn't surprise anybody uh the you know the champion uh, Buccaneers are definitely going to be up there. Tom Brady uh, is still a good player. I mean, he's a statue, but he has, you know, he has all the superstar abilities and stuff like that that people are going to want. Still a really strong player. Two good running backs in Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette. For my, for my money, I think Leonard Fournette's better. We'll see if he gets an upgrade. They also brought in Giovanni Bernard, so they have a ton of running backs. And they have a ton of receivers as well. I mean, this is, this is the point of this list. The most weapons wins. 
Mike uh, Evans, obviously, is one of the best receivers in the game. Chris Godwin is one of the best receivers in the game. Antonio Brown, it's amazing to think that Antonio Brown's the third receiver on this team. And then they still got guys like Scotty Miller, who's an absolute burner with speed, um, to give you, uh, you know, four options. Then you go to tight end, they got two good tight ends. O.J. Howard's one of the fastest tight ends in the game. I'd probably start him over Gronk. But Gronk's one of the best second tight ends in the league because he's so strong. He's such a great blocker, and he's still a really good receiver. So you have everything you need there. And then, oh, you also have a pretty strong offensive line with guys like Ali Marbet, Ryan John, or Ryan Jensen, and even uh, Tristan Warps, who was a rookie last year. All these guys are like in the 90 range. So they're one of the best offensive lines in the league and some of the best weapons in the league. And then my pick for the number one team, it shouldn't surprise anybody, uh, it's the Chiefs. I mean, Patrick Mahomes, best quarterback in the game, no doubt. Clyde Edwards Hilaire coming off of a great rookie year. He'll definitely be, uh, you know, he'll definitely be bumped up a bit. And then, you know, Tyreek Hill, the speediest guy, the most skilled guy in the game. They lost some receivers. They don't really have a great three receiver set anymore, but you still have a lot of speed with McCole Hardman. Uh, you probably got to find a third guy. I don't really think any of these th third guys I really like. I guess Demarcus Robinson is going to be it by default. And then you don't really need a third guy anyway because you also have one of the best tight ends in the game is Travis Kelsey. So the offensive line, I mean, the one thing the Bucks have over the Chiefs is the offensive offensive line uh the Chiefs did address it they went out and got Orlando Brown Joe Thune uh, or Thunny I'm not even sure how you say his name uh but ultimately I mean if I were to pick I really think the real reason I picked this team over the Bucks is because of Patrick Mahomes and the speed of Tyreek Hill obviously are both real Chico's Travis Kelsey as well I mean you got three guys that could all be 99 overall players so that's it that's the list if you guys want to see more videos like this like I said I like to do top 10 defenses next do me a favor, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching Mad Money Shit Out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.